You're listening to Binjang 91.5, and it's time for Tech Talk with Matthew Dickerson. I'm your host, Tony Graham. Hello, Matthew. Hey, good morning, Tony. Great to chat again about technology. It always is, Matthew. It I'm is. always excited. Yeah, good, yeah. good. Now, <laughs> it's infectious. With the audience too, I hope. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Now, um, big question is, how is uh, Tesla Model 3 performing in sales in California at the moment? Yeah, there's always these people out there who are predicting the doom of Tesla and the end of Tesla. And unfortunately for those people out there, the sales kept coming. And so when you look at California, and California has certainly been one of those areas in America that has been fairly quick to adopt some modern technology in their their vehicles, whether it be the, the old Prius, the hybrid vehicles, or whether it be electric vehicles. And they've got some rebates in place to try and encourage that. But the Model 3, and remember, this is a a car company that's got a very short amount of history compared to some of the the big players out there. But the Model 3 was California's best-selling car through the first quarter of this calendar year. And not just best-selling car in a category, but the best-selling car overall. They sold 18,856 units in the first three months of this year. And when you consider that some of the other cars that are behind them are Cars that you think are pretty popular cars, the, the Honda Civic just sold over 18,000, the Toyota Camry, obviously a very well-known brand, 17,871, the RAV4, the Corolla, I mean, they're in front of all those brands, and that sounds really incredible to me that, that you've got this little upstart coming along, knocking off some of these big players, the Hondas and the Toyotas. Uh, forget about some of the, yeah. the mainstay brands that you might see over in, in America, they're, they're just not even featuring on the list. When you break it down to the category, though, when you look at the Model 3, it fits into the near-luxury category. So that's got it competing with cars like the the BMW 3 and the Mercedes-Benz C-Class, and and it blows them away. There's there's no contest there. When you consider that the 3 Series was in second place with 3,437 cars, then you drop down to the Lexus with 2,700 and the Mercedes C-Class just over 2,000. I mean, it's blowing its rivals out of the water in terms of the same category. So it's great to see electric car adoption in, in somewhere like California. And, and I think people aren't realising how far this is going to spread. Uh, again, I, I'm not sure we'll, we'll blink one morning and suddenly everyone's driving an electric car. And I don't think that time is too far away. Yeah, Matthew, and I take it that the, the Toyota Camry, the RAV4 and the Corolla are probably hybrids as well. Yeah, they're, they're actually a combination, Tony. So they're actually a combination of their normal okay. vehicles and their hybrids. I can't tell you the breakup of those. I haven't got those figures, I'm sorry. But, yeah, they do include some of those hybrids. So I think where you're going with that is that it's the electric car leading the way and a few hybrids yeah. that are in the list as well. So certainly there is a mindset change. Now, again, California has been pretty quick to adopt this sort of technology, which is great. Other places around the world, there's some hits and there's some misses. Unfortunately, in Australia, there's some misses at the moment. Some European countries, there's some big hits as well. Yeah. Well, I suppose America does have the advantage that the uh, car is manufactured there, so it's probably going to be cheaper there than, than elsewhere. And also, California has re- legislation that favours uh, this kind of thing too, doesn't it? Yeah, they've got some rebates in place, although the, the Tesla has sold enough cars now that some of those rebates have dropped off, but they've still got some rebates in place, which has been one of the things that's really encouraged, say, the uptake of the Prius back in the last, say, 15 years or so. So they, they have been progressive, which I know is not a word you normally associate with American states, but they have been quite progressive in California, trying to get people to en- yeah. encourage people to buy things like electric and hybrid vehicles. Mm. So... On to our next topic. Now, restaurants in the Netherlands are, are enforcing social distancing. How are they doing that, Matthew? <laughs> well, they are enforcing social distancing, as most of the world is. And we've all got different strategies and different ways of doing it. You and I are speaking over a phone line rather than and actually seeing, sitting in the studio together. But in this particular restaurant in the Netherlands, they've got some creepy robot waiters. So when you come into this particular restaurant, you're greeted by a couple of robot waiters. They welcome you, say hello, they take you to your table. They do probably more than you'd expect them to be able to do. They can't do everything. They can't go and get the high chair out of the corner and and make sure that your child is set up in that high chair properly. But they can take your orders. They can bring out and serve the food. They can even help pick up the dishes. But again, they're not going to replace humans, but it's just a way that they're trying to work on using technology 
to enforce some of that social distancing. And look, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good move. In China, you probably see a little bit of a, around that with robot waiters and, and robots doing certain things, but it hasn't really spread outside China a lot. But if this picks up in a European country, it picks up in the Netherlands, I can see more and more people using this. Again, I hope it doesn't replace humans totally, but it might just add to that mix of, of people being able to have some social distancing and still keep some jobs going. Yeah, well, what about social distancing from the robot? I mean, obviously that could transfer the coronavirus too. Yeah, and I think the idea here is that you're not physically touching the robot. The idea is that you would talk to the robot. Obviously, the robot's not talking to you, so it's not able to spread COVID-19 to you. And I, th- I assume the robots are pretty safe from COVID-19 themselves. So they, they might get a virus in their yeah. software, but hopefully they're not going to get a, a virus the same as you and I might get. So, again, no, yes... Talking about physical physical uh, contact with uh, blood, uh, plagues and things like that. Yeah, so if, if people were touching the robots, that's certainly a risk. But with the, the plates, I think that's pretty safe in terms of them picking up and handling those plates. But again, washed in between, uh, look, they've got these strategies in place to try and work on, on reducing that interaction between humans, which sounds sad because it's nice to have humans interacting with each other, but this is just one of those mm. strategies in place. Will it be in place in six months' time? Will it be in place in 12 months' time? Probably not in its current form. I think this is really probably two things. One, a bit of a gimmick to, to make this restaurant stand out from other restaurants. And two, uh, some sort of practical component to try and reduce that social interaction. Yeah. Now, I always like music. I think it's very really soothing. How will listening to music help your health, Matthew? Well, we know we've got a lot of health devices at the moment. We've got watches that are quite incredible in what they're doing heart rate, blood pressure, a whole range of things. But there's some information around at the moment about a new set of AirPods that will be out probably next year that may well be using ambient light sensors to track your health. And what they'll be doing is if, if you've ever seen someone in hospital, if you've been in hospital yourself and you've actually put the little cylinder over your finger as, as one of the things that they use to monitor, they're monitoring your heart rate with that, but they're also monitoring your oxygenation level or, or how much oxygen is in your blood. And so they're talking about some patents that have been applied for with AirPods to actually monitor, using ambient light sensors, monitor the amount of oxygen that's in your blood, potentially using your earlobes or part of your ear to do that. Now, when you think of the simple little AirPods you stick in your ear and listen to some music, they're fairly small. So to pack even more technology into these is is quite incredible. But basically the idea will be that you'll be able to use that to monitor things like your oxygenation level. That helps with monitoring your overall fitness and and basically working on your fitness, but can also go a step further and it can help detect things such as COVID-19 because one of the ways you can see some indication of that is, say, shortness of breath, and that might be linked to the oxygen level in your blood. So most of these things are talking about general health, but they're also looking for specific ways they might look for COVID-19, pick up things early with COVID-19 rather than wait until someone's got all the symptoms, which means they've probably had COVID-19 for some period of time already. Hmm. And you've been listening to Tech Talk with Matthew Dickerson on Binjang 91.5 with your host, Tony Graham. Stay tuned this afternoon at 3.40pm for the next edition and it's back to the great music and community information on Binjang. Talk to you this afternoon, Tony.